Welcome back everyone to another episode of Med School Mondays with Promo. I'm your host, Promo as usual. So in case you missed last week's lecture, very, very important lecture, we talked about hypothyroidism and the week before we talked about an introduction to the thyroid hormone. So if you missed any of those lectures, click the links below and you can go learn that stuff right away. But what are we gonna do today? Today is part three of the thyroid hormone. We're gonna talk about what happens when there's too much of it and we call that hyperthyroidism. So let's get right into it. To remind you guys, the hypothalamus, again, the control center of the brain, releases a hormone called TRH, thyroid releasing hormone. That will stimulate the anterior pituitary gland, releasing TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, which will then stimulate the thyroid follicular cell, releasing large amounts of T4 and T3. The T4 is gonna be secreting greater amounts, which will be converted into T3 by an enzyme referred to as 5 prime diiodinase. T3 is a biologically active form, and it's gonna do all the stuff that we learned in the first part of the thyroid hormone lecture. So what happens when we have too much T4, T3? We have a bunch of clinical features. Intolerance is the first one. Intolerance to heat. The person's gonna be sweating a lot. When, uh, when all of us are gonna be feeling cold, that guy's gonna be taking off his, uh, his uh, sweatshirt, his uh, s snow pants, and he's gonna be out in the cold and not feeling cold at all. Weight. The patient's weight is gonna be decreased. So the patient has a high BMR, basal metabolic rate, which will uh, continue to break down the fats and the glycogen, and the patient's constantly gonna be having an increased appetite. Activity level is going to be very hyperactive. Uh, bowel movements, think about the opposite of hypothyroidism. So from now on, just think about fast, fast, fast things. So bowel movements that are fast is referred to as diarrhea. Reflexes are going to be brisk. Mood, again, very, very anxious. You definitely want to rule out uh, mania, which we'll learn about in psychiatry. But just to remind yourself again, you're going to see features like uh, distractibility, irritability, loss of concentration, very talkative, lots of restlessness. You're going to see tremors as well. That's one of the movement problems. Proximal muscle weakness, again with hypothyroidism we called it hypothyroid myopathy. Over here we call it thyrotoxic myopathy. The difference will be with the hyperthyroid patients, it will have a normal CK level. So remember that. Myxedema is going to be a pretibial myxedema as well as a periorbital myxedema. Skin findings, the skin is going to be very warm and moist. The hair, thin hair. Heart. Now heart, you want to think of a few things for sure. Remember that it's going to be tachycardia, so a heart rate above 100 beats per minute. Also, you got tachyarrhythmias. The patient may even have uh, atrial fibrillation, so I'll keep that correlations in mind. Uh, cholesterol levels. The LDL receptor in this case will be highly expressive. So cholesterol levels will be decreased. So the patient will present with hypocholesterolemia. Also associated with a couple other things. Uh, think about high blood pressure as well as bone loss. Bone loss because due to increased osteoclastic activity. Complications, we're going to talk about the thyroid storm. We're gonna talk about that at the end of the lecture. So for now, just remember thyroid storm. And sexual issues, again, with the females especially, there's gonna be menstruation irregularities. What are some of the labs? So you always, always, always want to measure a T4 especially as well as TSH. If you measure both T3 and T4, you're gonna see it's gonna be hyper elevated, elevated T3, T4. The TSH levels, now depending on if it's a primary issue, so in the thyroid gland, or depending on if it's up in the brain, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna vary. So again, if it's a primary issue, that means the problem is in the thyroid gland, the TSH levels will be decreased. And why is that? T4, T3 is gonna be increased. It's gonna go back until the anterior pituitary gland as well as the hypothalamus. Hey, suppress the TRH and suppress the TSH level. So that's why they're gonna be decreased. However, now if it's a secondary issue, such as up in the anterior pituitary gland, TSH levels will be increased. So we're gonna learn about that when we talk about a pituitary adenoma. So over here, again, the TSH levels will be increased and that'll lead to an increase in T4 and T3. Awesome guys, awesome. And of course, LDL receptors, you know already, if cholesterol levels are gonna be low, you know the LDL receptor expression levels are gonna be high. So let's get right into the causes now. Causes of hyperthyroidism. The most, most common cause is referred to as Graves' disease. It's an autoimmune disease where we have thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins. The TSI, the thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins, will stimulate the thyroid follicular cell directly. So what are they doing? They're working on the TSH receptors that will release T4 as well as T3. And that's how we get the hyperthyroid state over here. Two, two, two unique features. You have to know, that's why I gave a red star over here. The first one is what happens in the skin. So what I'm trying to say is, we have all of these clinical features. However, Graves' disease is the only condition in hyperthyroidism which presents with these two unique features as well. So in the skin, we got something called pretibial myxedema. So what's going on in pretibial myxedema? The thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins will stimulate dermal fibroblasts. This will lead to dermopathy of the skin. So what happens, the skin right below the knee is going to be very thick and very red. That's referred to as pretibial myxedema. The next thing is the eye. 
exhaust almost. Now we've all seen pictures in our exams where the uh, eyes are literally bulging out. So how does that happen? You have to remember this is cranial nerve, cranial nerve three. Cranial nerve three innervates a muscle called the superior levator palpebrae muscle. And what's that responsible for? It actually lifts up the eyelids. So now that muscle is extra, extra innervated because it has beta one receptors. The thyroid hormone is gonna stimulate all of these beta one receptors. So all of the eyelids retract backwards. On the other side, what happens behind the eyeball is another thing. There's, a, there's gonna be accumulation and deposits of mucopolysaccharides pushing the eyeball out of the socket. So that's how you get that exophthalmos look, okay? Now, Graves' disease also presents during times of stress. It's stress, especially during the time of pregnancy. Labs, like we know, we said it's a primary issue, so both T3 and T4 is gonna be increased, whereas the TSH is gonna be suppressed. It's also associated with this over here, HLA-DR3, as well as HLA-B8. The histology, you got tall, crowded epithelial cells and a scalloped colloid, okay? Treatment, a number of different treatments. The first treatment I want to introduce you guys, these are called the theamides. We got PTU, propyl thiouracil. We mentioned this medication as well a couple times already, but what does it do? It inhibits this enzyme called thyroid peroxidase. If you can recall thyroid peroxidase, what does it do? It's involved for the, the coupling reactions, the organification, as well as the oxidation reactions, okay? It also inhibits 5' deionase. What does that enzyme do? It converts T4 into T3. Methimazole only inhibits T peroxidase. T peroxidase stands for thyroid peroxidase. Adverse effects you have to know. There's a skin rash, there's agranulocytosis. What else have we got here? Aplastic anemia and hepatotoxicity. So the next concept is, well, what happens if a female is pregnant? How do you break this down? In the first trimester, you must use the medication P2. You can't use methamazole because it's highly teratogenic during that time. It can lead to severe aplastic anemia. However, in the second and third trimesters, you can't use PTU, and that's because it has a very hepatotoxic effect. So instead, now you can use methamazole. So remember the reverse over there. The glucocorticoids, again, like we learned already, inhibit the in conversion of T4 to T3 by inhibiting the enzyme 5 prime diiodinase. You can also use non-selected beta blockers such as propranolol. Those are going to help in uh, the movement issues such as the tremor. It's also going to help with palpitations. If you want a permanent cure, if you're suggesting a permanent cure for your patient, remember, you can also do radioablation of the thyroid gland, but, but remember, remember this, it's always most likely going to lead to hypothyroidism. So keep that in mind, make sure you definitely counsel your patients on that. All right, awesome, let's move over to this side over here. Now we've got some other causes of hyperthyroidism as well. What do we have over here now? We've got exogenous thyroid use. What's going on? The patient is taking this uh, thyroid hormone and taking it to either uh, increase their basal metabolic rate so that they can actually lose some weight. Unfortunately, what does it do to the gland itself? The, the uh, thyroid hormone gland will atrophy away. So on physical finding, you'll find an involuted gland. The labs, again, the same. The T4 is gonna be high, it's gonna go back to the brain, suppress the TSH level, so low TSH. How do you treat it? You basically tell the patient, hey, stop the, stop the use of this thyroid hormone. What do we have here? We got subacute granulomatous thyroiditis. If you listen to the hypothyroidism video the other day, it's exactly the same thing. We said that the early phase of it is gonna be hyperthyroid, and then we talked about the later phase, which was hypothyroid. So right now we'll just like focus on the hyperthyroid phase, which is the early phase. Again, the patient's gonna present with physical uh, pain as well, jaw pain, a tender thyroid. The labs, like you already expect, T4 levels will be increased, TSH will be decreased, and ESR will be increased. The radioactive iodine uptake is gonna be quite low. So what do you do for this patient? You give them aspirin. The next one over here is silent thyroiditis. It's silent because the patient's not experiencing any sort of symptoms. There's nothing on physical exam as well. What is this? It's another autoimmune condition. We have antibodies to the thyroid peroxidase, and we got anti-thyroglobulin antibodies. Like we said, non-tender, and it's a leaky gland. So it's not a hyperfunction gland, it just leaky so t3 t4 just spills out there's no skin involvement and there's no eye involvement so that's how you can tell the difference between silent thyroiditis which is autoimmune as well as up over here graves disease which is also autoimmune okay treatment of course since there's no uh, physical findings there's no symptoms no treatment at all pituitary adenoma now this is very important i put a star over here this is the only condition where TSH levels will actually be high. So the issue is up in the brain, a pituitary adenoma is happening, which is causing increased release of TSH, and that's gonna to lead to an increased levels of T3 and T4. It's a rare condition, the radioactive iodine uptake will also be elevated. How do you treat this patient? Well, first of all, you wanna find the pituitary adenoma. You do a scan of the brain using an MRI. Once you find it, of course, remove the tumor using surgery. Awesome, guys, let's go over here to this jaw-based phenomena. Now, this is the opposite of 
the wolf shake off effect. In the wolf shake off effect, what's happening? Too much iodine being dumped into the thyroid follicular cell isn't going to, in fact, inhibit the organification step. When you inhibit that step, the patient presents with hypothyroidism. So in the jaw based off phenomena, what's going on? You have an iodine deficient the patient. Now you give this patient enough iodine and that's gonna to lead to a state of thyrotoxicosis. Okay, so it's almost like the opposite. And the last thing, like we said, a complication of long-standing hyperthyroidism can result in a thyroid storm. And it's just like what we talked about with long-standing hypothyroidism, if you can recall, that can result in a myxedema coma. So over here, we've got a thyroid storm, a life-threatening issue. So it's a medical emergency. You wanna take the patient to the hospital right away. What is this precipitated by? Again, think of a condition such as a stressful conditions. Patient has had a surgery, some sort of infection, some sort of medical condition, maybe a heart attack, congestive heart failure. Uh, what else? It could be a trauma. The patient could present a severely agitated a fever, delirium, lots of diarrhea, and could result in coma. And the most common cause of death will be a tachyarrhythmia. It's a life-threatening condition, so of course, take your patient to the hospital. You're gonna run some labs, find increased LFTs. How are you gonna treat this patient? The four P's right over here. The first P, propranolol. It's a beta blocker. Use it to help with symptoms. PTU, propyl thyroduracil. That's gonna inhibit some of the conversion of the five prime diodinase as well as the thyroid peroxidases. You got corticosteroids. You can use prednisolone. And lastly, you got a Lugal iodide, which is really a potassium iodide. So the four P's will definitely help you treat this patient. That's it guys, and that's hyperthyroidism for you guys in a nutshell. I wanna thank you guys again for joining me today and learning about this important concept. Next week, we're gonna talk about the remaining portion of the thyroid gland, which is the thyroid cancers. So definitely tune in for that lecture. Until then, definitely like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and of course, comment on the section below. Let me know what you guys think about the video. If you missed any of the videos from before, especially last week's video on hypothyroidism, the link's gonna pop up in a couple seconds. So definitely click on that. Until then, this is Promo signing off and we'll see you next week on Med School Mondays with Promo.